everybody, and you are listening to a recording of um, Sexuality Misconceptions with Diane, and we're talking about asexuality today. Uh, we're not doing a Facebook Live because we did one a few weeks ago and Facebook blocked it and shut it down because I got a message back saying because we use the word asexual, which I find funny because, you know, I've interviewed other people like transgender, gay, uh, you know, lesbian, uh, poly, like other words get out there and they're okay. And then asexual is actually not about having sex. So it just made me laugh. Anyway, but we're still learning. And I always say that at the show, this is a practice for me every day. I'm learning and I'm going to be better and better with every show. Um, you know, so I want to remind you that there's no right and wrong here. There's only what people are thinking and feeling and what brings you pleasure. So please keep any der derogatory remarks to yourself because they will be deleted if you put any up. I encourage you to ask questions. Uh, we may not get to them now, but we could get to them at another uh, time because my guests will come back. And we will want to answer your questions, definitely, because you know what? We don't talk about sexuality enough. We don't express it. We don't, we, you know, we kind of try to leave it like just sitting there. And you know, how long do you plan for a good vacation? How long do you plan for your retirement or for your children's education? You know, well, how important is pleasure in your life? Like pleasure really needs to be planned for. We need to have pleasure every day. So that's what we're learning about on this show. We're going to talk about misconceptions that people think about on sexuality. And sometimes it's things we never heard of. So it makes us a little nervous or we get scared. So the purpose of this program is for everybody to have the opportunity to talk about what makes their life more pleasurable, what they like, and maybe it's going to resonate with you and help you someday. Maybe you have some things about yourself you don't understand. So maybe they'll come up here. You can ask questions, feel free, because we're here to learn and grow together, okay? So that being said, I wanted to talk to you about my guest, Sandra Bellamy. She is the author of Asexual Perspectives, 47 Asexual Stories. She was a speaker at the UK Asexuality Conference in London in 2018. She has been interviewed on radio programs, including the BBC twice, she has been the host of a person, uh, sorry, she has been the host of an in-person meetup group for asexual people for five years. Sandra is the daily chat show host of My, Se My Asexual Life on YouTube. So you can go and check her out. And I'll be posting all of these on the comments here. So you'll find them easily. She is also the founder and trainer of Asexualize Academy, the world's first online training center and school for asexuals and asexuality. And there's a free module, so go check it out. You might learn something about yourself even or somebody you, want, you love. You can follow her blog at www.asexualize.com. And that's A-S-E-X-U-A-L-I-S-E, -S -E, okay? She can be heard on New Inceptions, Freestyle Your Life, and Straight Up Gay Podcasts in, on iTunes. Her mission is to get asexuality recognized as a sexual orientation in its own right throughout the globe, removing the stigma and ridicule of people having no sexual desires. She identifies as a heteromantic asexual with the gray area of kissing. I like that. I like kissing too. I am happy that she is with us today, and I want you to welcome my special guest, Sandra Bellamy. Welcome, oh, Sandra. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that was amazing. Thank you, Diane. How are You're you? You're welcome. You're welcome. So I'm going to get right to the questions, all right? Because you, I know you have a lot to say. I know. <laughs> yeah, my chat show is about an hour long usually. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So my first question to you is, how do you know that you're asexual? Ah, how do you know you're asexual? So asexuality is a sexual orientation that's the lack of sexual attraction. So basically, um, if you don't get the need, urge, or want for partner sexual intercourse, you don't look at someone and think, ah, I want sex with you, then you would likely be asexual because we don't naturally feel that way. We're not wired that way. So sexual attraction is kind of something that's not important. In built into us 
so we just don't see people like that we could see someone for example aesthetically pleasing and think they look like a beautiful painting but we don't want to have sex with that painting we just admire the view of it <laughs> so that's one of the analogies that i can explain and most asexuals have an in joke of preferring cake to sex like, <laughs> much better than sex that's a very very well known uh, joke in the asexual community People, you know, we prefer our food to sex anyway. <laughs> so we like pleasures in life, but we get our pleasure in other ways, not through having sexual intercourse. And we get pleasure in other ways in relationships as well. Okay. And so you can have a perfectly happy life, though, even though you're not having sex and you are still finding ways to have pleasure. Yes. Yes. So basically I live, you know, I live my life to the max. So I'm busy doing projects and stuff like that. I'm very creative. I'm a writer, as you know, I'm working on my second book for asexuals, which is actually called Asexual Guide to Sex with real life oh. asexual sex stories, sex advice, sex help and sex guidance. It's uh, just been over a year now that I've been working on that. So it's going to be the most amazing sex book you've ever read in your life because it's going to be completely different to anything else you've read in your entire life in the world. Okay, so I, I have to ask you this. So in my mind, I'm thinking the sex guide for asexuals. So is that like a, a sex guide on how not to have sex? No, no. So okay. let me explain. This is a really common misconception. So asexuality is a sexual orientation that's a lack of sexual attraction. But sexual behavior is not the same as sexual attraction. So therefore, an asexual person can still have sex if they want to. So sexual desire is the desire for sex in and of itself. Sexual attraction is when you're attracted to someone or or some people and you want to have sex with that person or people and then you can get aroused which is like a bodily function without actually wanting anyone involved usually with asexuals they prefer to do solo sexual activities or non-activities at all uh, but some asexuals don't mind having sex some asexuals are on the more sexual end of the spectrum because i know i haven't i know i haven't uh, mentioned the asexuality spectrum yet but it's a huge spectrum so the ones on the more sexual end of the spectrum uh might have sex uh, some of them do or have done i used to have sex so even though i'm asexual i didn't find out till 2014 that i was asexual i had heterosexual relationships for over half of my life so i did have sex in my past i was in a long-term relationship i've been in two long-term relationships and the last long term when i was there with them for eight and a half years in total we were together for like a year and a half split up for six months and got back for another seven years so eight and a half years in total so yeah and uh he was good at sex so there's this misconception as well that oh you're asexual because you haven't had good sex it's like no he was really good at sex i've had sex with five guys he was really good at sex. The other four were rubbish at it. So, but he was good at it, which is why I didn't mind so much doing it. I did far more of it than him. And I could tell you a really funny story that I think you'll love and your listeners will love. Okay. Are you ready sure. for it? Brace yep. yourself. So uh, this is how I don't think sexually. This is, this is how my mind works. So my ex uh, was looking in a bookstore with me and he picked up a Kama Sutra book and he was looking through it and I personally, uh, I'm new to Repulsed and I have this thing where I don't like if I'm with a boyfriend for him to go around looking at other naked people. That's how I've always been. And so I thought, okay, he's doing this. So for Christmas, I got him a pocket book, which was a cartoon book of sex positions because I just thought he likes looking at that type of thing. So I will give it to him as a present. I didn't <laughs> think he wanted to use all the different positions on me, which he then proceeded to do over the coming months. And he was like, this is this position. And I'm like, what? He's like, this is this position. This is called that. And so over the course of a lot of months, we did all these different positions that he would be reading in this book. And not because I didn't associate that with me, because that's how an asexual brain works. It doesn't associate sexual attraction and sex with yourself. You're like removed of the situation. So I just thought it's a nice like thing for him to look at. I prefer him looking at that than looking at actual naked mm. bodies. And then, but yeah, he, he was doing all these moves. So I just let him get on with it. I'm like, okay, whatever. And I just participated as like someone who's just like participating in a board game or something, you know, it's like, okay, let's do it. Let's just get on and do this. And then he was like, leg here and leg there. So and did you, the, yeah. But did you enjoy it? 
Like, did you find pleasure in those sexual I, activities? I, I, no, I've always preferred kissing and being touched. So I preferred kissing and foreplay to okay, so sex I, any day. I'm not interested in sex, really. I'd rather okay, do so the washing up. I'm just going to stop you a minute. <laughs> I just want to get this clear in my head, okay? So if I understand you correctly, the difference there is... When he picked up the Kumasatra book, he's looking at it because he wants to try these things with you, and he's looking at it as a future, uh, you know, endeavor with you. Whereas when you're looking at it, you're thinking like, why is he looking at those naked people? Like you had no reference at all that he might want to try some of those things or that he was thinking of you and him when he was looking at those. Because no. to you, that was just like he's looking at naked people. Yeah. So you got him a book of cartoons thinking he just wanted to look at the cartoons. You didn't ever yeah, it, it connect was, the was... dots that he <laughs> might want to have sex with you in these ways. No, it was just like okay. a pocket book. It was like from a, from a card shop. And it was literally a pocket book. And when I gave it to him, he put it in his wardrobe. So I thought he was just going to forget about it. And he was just going to look at it for his own amusement. Because he bought men's magazines, like men's health magazines, which I presume had sex stuff in them sometimes. And so he put it in his wardrobe at the top shelf under the clothes. So I just thought he was going to forget about it or whatever, or get it out when he wanted to just have a look. So it's men and women, but they were cartoons. They were just drawings. Right. Do you know what I mean? So, and you did like, not really enjoy that. You didn't mind doing it. it yeah, it was consensual, but it's like um, one time he tries to instigate sex with me while I'm doing the washing up. I've got my music playing in my headphones, and it's like, I'd rather do the washing up, and I hate right. washing up. I buy paper plates, so I hate washing up that much, but I'd rather stay washing up and listen to music any day than have sex. And he was coming up behind me, chuffing through my breath, all ready to go, and I was thinking, I just want to do the washing up and listen to my music. Do you know what I mean? Because that's how I think. I'm not bothered right. about having it. You know, but because I love the kissing so much, because I love the touching, which I did get excited by, but I didn't get, you know, sex doesn't really do anything for me. I can feel it. I can, sometimes it used to leave me feeling raw as well. Sometimes you used to cry and I didn't know why. Not all the time, but sometimes. And I guess it's because I don't really, you know, my heart wasn't really in it. I don't really want to do it in the first place. I'd rather do the kissing and, you know, the foreplay and stuff like that and not actually have, the, you know, the genitals involved or not in a, way like that anyway you know like if I'm sat between guys legs I'm okay about that if I'm sat on his lap and his penis is there and his you know in his uh pants or whatever as long as his trousers are on he's covered up I'm okay sat on his lap like okay. that I don't mind which some sexuals would probably find quite erogenous <laughs> but you know I'm okay with stuff like that because I like a teenager style romance you know with guys I who are see. like 21 above so I like oh. all the kissing and cuddling and stuff but I don't need the sex. Okay. Yeah. So, so then you find the pleasure and just the connection, the kissing, the enjoyment of doing things together, stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. I like going to theme parks, zoos, aquariums, clubbing, right. out for meals, cinema. So, and talking, I, I get a very, I'm very interested in intelligent guy, but what I, I couldn't tell that you like to talk. <laughs> Chat show host. I go practice every day. I'm like, <laughs> Well, it's okay, Sandra. It just means that you're a verbal processor. You process information by talking. Yeah, I love talking. Yeah. It's the art form of it. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, I'm going to ask you my next question because I'm going to forget my questions here. I'm chatting away with you. Um, I wanted to know, can an asexual be happy in a long-term relationship uh, I'd imagine with another asexual, but with somebody who does like sex, like how would that work in a long-term relationship or can it work? Okay. Um, so I told you about my asexual guide to sex book and I have to say that everyone in that book has had sex before and it's to help asexuals decide whether they want to have sex or not If for okay. those who are thinking about having it. So certain sex repulse asexuals that don't want it ever and that's fine. I do not say anyone should have sex if they don't want it. They shouldn't have it. But some asexuals come to me and they're like, I don't know what to do, Sandra. So this book helps those type of people to make an informed decision and choice. Now, some people in the book are still having sex and they're in relationships with sexuals. And some aren't having sex anymore and they don't ever want it again I'm not, without giving the whole book away. But yeah, right. so it depends where they fall on the asexual spectrum, which I, I must like, I know that's one of your questions, like what's the asexual spectrum, which we'll have to address soon because otherwise people will be like, well, what's the spectrum? Ahead. You can go ahead and address that. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the asexuality spectrum, um, 
So basically, there's a, a spectrum called, uh, of asexuals uh, called the asexuality spectrum. And basically, the asexuality spectrum uh, goes on a range from those aromantics, or aromantics as a lot of people pronounce them, asexuals, those who experience no romantic attraction, no sexual attraction. And then kind of in the middle, there's a romantic asexuals, those that want a romantic relationship, experience romantic attraction, but no sexual attraction, to those that are on the more grey asexual end of the spectrum. So the grey asexuals, uh, the textbook definition of a grey asexual is those that um, feel sexual attraction only under limited, rare or specific circumstances, or they feel it but not enough to want to act on it. And then you go into the demisexuals, which is part of the grey asexuals, and a demisexual can only experience sexual attraction when a deep, deep emotional bond has been formed. Now, some people will say to me, well, don't lots of sexuals want an emotional bond? It's not the same. Yes, a lot of people do want an emotional bond, but demisexuals cannot experience sexual attraction until when and if they get an emotional bond with someone. And it's reciprocated, maintained and sustained usually by the other party. Otherwise, they're just the same as other asexuals. They don't experience any sexual attraction. So, and then there's lots of subcategories in between, and obviously you could get an aromantic, someone who lacks romantic attraction, demisexual, but they still, you know, can experience sexual attraction when a deep emotional bond's been formed. So there's lots of subcategories, so I'm sorry if people are listening now and I haven't said your subcategory because there's just loads and loads of them, but this is why the, um, you know, some asexuals as well are sex positive. And so because they don't experience sexual attraction, but sexual behavior is different, they can partake in sex, even though they're not sexually attracted to the person. So how well, will they, work... will they enjoy it? Like, are they turned on? Uh, some just, some kind of like do it to please their partner, which for me personally, I don't think that's a great thing to do. Um, if they're not enjoying it themselves, some of right. them don't, don't really enjoy it. They just looking at the clock and want to get over quickly. And it's kind of a process that I just do to please it. So, for example, in my Asexual Perspectives book, there's um, a person called Marnie, whose story I, I read part of recently. And she's in a relationship. She's been married to a sexual person for years and she found out she was asexual in the marriage. And she's been married for a very long time. He's very sexual. So they agree to have sex once a week. But she says, uh, he knows I'm only doing it for him. And I'm just waiting for the clock to get it over. And it, personally, for me, I don't think that's a good, healthy relationship. Do you know what I mean? I think it's better. Yeah, to, if yeah you, because if you don't really want to, like sex is a very intimate, serious thing. It's a, a yeah. part of who you are. So, you know, your, your desires, your needs, what you do want matters a lot. And if you go, if you're constantly overriding yourself, that'll have a long-term yeah. effect on, on you. Yeah. So there's that person there, but then there's other people. So for example, in my asexual guide to sex book, without giving it all away, um, there's, there's some people that do enjoy sex. Uh, they enjoy it as an activity to do with their partner. They tend to be predominantly on the more sexual end of the spectrum. So like the gray asexuals or the demisexuals. Um, and they, you know, they can enjoy it in a relationship. They can enjoy the physicality of it, but they still think differently. Like when people read my asexual guide to sex book, rather than me just saying they think differently, they'll be, a, it's like an immersive experience when you're in the minds of the person whose story, your, your real life right. story you're reading. And you can tell they think differently. It's, it's more like mechanical. It's more, um, you know, they're going through the motions of what do I do? A lot of asexuals don't know how to have sex, which is why I the book. They don't know what to do with their hands, their legs, their arms. It doesn't okay. come naturally to them because it's not part of who they are. So that's why I did the book. It literally asked, you know, what, to, what, should, uh, what should you do with, with your arms if you're having sex? What should you do with the hands? What should you right. do with your legs, you know? Um, and, and I think some, some I, I wonder, like, some of what you're describing, because, you know, I've, I've been uh, an ADHD specialist and, you know, autistic syndrome and all that stuff on the spectrum. Are a lot of the people who are asexual autistic? Uh, some people who are asexual or autistic, yeah, but not all. Um, okay. And I've known, I've known autistic people that aren't asexual. They love sex. Okay. So there's a very big misconception that everyone who's asexual is autistic. I'm not autistic. Right. You know, my best asexual friend, they have uh, had one test that suggests they might be autistic, but they're waiting for the full test. Okay. Um, and some of my friends, you know, asexual friends, I have got um, another couple of friends, they're both autistic, but not everyone is autistic. I know okay. people, I know three people all in my city who are asexual and none of them are autistic. 
Okay. So, um, so yeah, you know, it, I don't like it when people say, oh, well, all asexual or autistic, it's simply not true. Some are, some aren't, you know? Right. So, um, well, I think a lot of it depends on interest too, right? So, okay. So wait, let me get to my next question. Okay. So how did you learn that you were asexual? Uh, okay. Can I just say one thing as well? Oh, you, yes. You're asking about relationships. I forgot to say, which is really important, that asexuals can be in relationships with other asexuals. Okay. Because you were asking about if they can be in relationships with sexuals. And also, there's someone in my asexual perspectives book who's with a bisexual and they're not having sex. So the sexual person is happy to not have sex. Okay. And I know, and I know someone else who's been with their girlfriend for two years and they don't have sex it's a long distance relationship he's highly heterosexual and she is an aromantic asexual mm -hmm. so and there's um i know a guy who's got a young fiance and they're both asexual and i know have a friend who's married to an asexual they're both asexual so you can have relationships with asexual other asexuals live happily ever after with no sex whatsoever okay. so, it's so they're finding say, pleasures you know, in other it, things yeah, it's usually activities to share together, common interests, life goals, supporting each other, you know, watching movies. Uh, right. And it just so everything life. else, everything else, just not the sex. Yeah, because they don't get pleasure from it. That's the point. Right. Unless, unless they're getting pleasure from it, there's no point in having it. Do you right. know what I mean? Because it's not totally. healthy for them. So I they're understand. in loving, healthy, happy relationships which haven't got sex involved because that doesn't make them happy. So. Right. Okay. You know, some people say to me, oh, well, you know, like, oh, sex is really healthy. I'm like, it's only healthy if you enjoy it. If you don't enjoy it and you're being coerced or pressurized into it, you know, it's sexual abuse or rape at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, and some yeah, asexual... consent is huge. We did a show on consent. We're going to do more. Consent is everything. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, you know, everyone just assumes that people want sex. And it's really, it's really, you know, destructive to, to, to people yeah. who don't want that, you know. And it shouldn't be like a given that that's the case because asexuals are genuine and for a lot of asexuals do not want sex. A lot of sex repulse. A lot don't have any sexual feelings. Right. They don't want to participate in sex. They find it gross, even the idea of it or parts of it, they really find gross as well. And they don't want, they don't want genitals anywhere near them. A lot of asexuals are virgins. A lot of them haven't even okay. had relationships, you know? So it's important to like uh, let people know about that as well. So okay. your, next, your next question was, uh, how did I find out I was asexual? Yeah, how did you find out you were asexual? Yeah, so I went to see a counsellor um, because I was having problems that when I dated sexual guys, mm -hmm. uh, that basically the expectation of sex at the end of the night made me nearly wet myself. I just couldn't deal with it anymore because it was too much, the sexual energy from them, the expectation they wanted sex, and I knew I didn't want it. Um, I had sex in the past. Uh, last time was 2011. I've been sex free for nine years this year. My now, some years. people would cry over that. I know. I'm so happy. I'm like, yeah, baby, a life without sex. I'm rocking well, and rolling. <laughs> good for being true to yourself. Uh, yeah, I'm so happy. I'm going to be celebrating in November because October, I don't know what date it was, but in October it was 2011. Okay, good. So, like, November, I'll be going, Ray party time um so yeah so i went to this uh counselor and i explained to her that um i don't know what to do because um i want a relationship and uh i'm dating these sexual guys and the expectation of sex at the end of the night is getting so bad you know i'm nearly wet in my pants basically and um you know it's 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 very upsetting and i don't know what to do because i was pretty much at that point giving up on dating and relationships completely and thinking there's no one for me i'm gonna have to be alone forever because i just don't want sex in a relationship i just can't do it anymore i physically can't i tried to force myself like the year before in 2013 with the bangladesh guy and i couldn't i end up being in the shower naked with him just to give him some sexual pleasure because and i was forcing myself to do it. i didn't want to do that mm -hmm. and i was showering him down naked just so he could look at me and it was like you so, know I, I should be doing something and what like what did the counselor say to you oh it was shocking she said you know you have to have sex in order to keep a good guy and obviously she said know, that she said yes. you had to have sex those specific words you wow. have to have sex in order to uh, keep a good guy and to me that's a license for rape do you know what i mean if yeah. i don't want it and and i just i just want to put a caveat here that's not a good person to go see because no therapist should be telling you what to do or not to do they should just help you understand what you really want yeah, and what was even worse is um, 
I found out, uh, I went home and Googled, I love kissing, not sex. And it came up with Asexuality in Avon, which is um, Asexuality Visibility Education Network. And there was tons of forums there of people that were like wanting relationships without sex and that were living, loving and being happy in all themselves without sex. And I was like, yay, this is great. But I actually told her about that. The counsellor, who was an NHS counsellor, so a professional counsellor, I went back and told her about that. I found out about this thing called Asexuality. And she, I asked her to like look it into it because I thought I was it. And when I had the next session with her, she hadn't bothered. And she's like, oh, the NHS won't let us do stuff like that because of that type of content. And then I said to her, well, you could have looked it up at home. And she just wasn't bothered. And her face and attitude said it all. She wasn't bothered. She wasn't interested. She didn't want to know. And it was upsetting me. So she said, oh, I think we better end our sessions because you know that you're feeling upset about our conversations. And so I went away and I thought about it because I wanted, because I wanted this problem solved. Because I mean, I, I thought, you know, it's a big issue. I don't want sex. How am I going to have a relationship? But I knew I couldn't be talking to her anymore because obviously she doesn't understand. But I wanted to go away and, and make the decision for myself. And then I rang her up and said, no, I won't be coming back again. That's the last time I ever had any counselling, you know. And it's like, it was just, it was just a horrendous experience, you know, and right. I saw her in the street actually, and she gave me a weird look and I looked at her thinking, you shouldn't have been saying that to me. It's disgusting, you know, mm -hmm. absolutely disgusting. So I was yeah. horrified. Um, but if I hadn't have done that, I wouldn't be helping asexuals today. So I've got That's to true. thank her for that. You have to thank people yeah. who are not great. Everything so happens for a reason. I totally believe that too. Yeah. So it was thanks to her that I googled it because I wouldn't have googled I love kissing not sex if I hadn't of like had that experience. and so so did you when you went online <clears throat> when you went online and you found these uh this information were there groups or places where you could uh call or attend or what um there's uh Avon which is short for Asexual right? Visibility Education Network which has forums that you can see part of and then you can join that if you want to so i joined that but there was also two asexual dating sites which i'm still on to this day trying to find my asexual asexual younger. dating sites well yes. obviously asexuals would do great dating other asexuals that's a good thing i, yeah. didn't, I didn't even think of that yeah um the only problem is there's some people that go on there that are not really asexual and some of them oh. are honest and others aren't honest about it so yes that can be quite uh not very good sometimes and yeah, also well, that, that would be confusing yeah and it's very difficult to find someone because because a lot of asexuals are introverted a lot of them don't want to make the first move in talking so they unfortunately in my personal experience and experience of my friends some of my friends as well because sex is not involved in the relationship, sadly, in my experience of the asexual dating scene, a lot of them are not that bothered whether they have a relationship or not. There's no driving force there like there mm. is with sexuals, you know? But I approach loads of people because I'm extrovert. I'm, I'm a minority within a minority because I'm extrovert. There's not many of us. And, uh, and yeah, and so I, I approached loads of people, well, I say loads, I put over the years, because it's 2014 since I've been on there, but I, I need, I want a younger foreign asexual Indian guy without sex, without marriage and without kids. And that was quite hard to get. And I like living on my own, but I think there's someone for everyone. So if my asexual Indian soil mates out there in the UK, please contact me. <laughs> now I you know what she's looking for. Yeah, I'll probably get like 200 or 300 or 500 sexual Indian guys now after me, but you know. Yeah, like, no, no, only no asexuals. She was very yeah. specific. Only yeah. asexuals. If you don't want sex, if you don't like sex. Okay, so we're yeah. not a dating show though. So let's just move <laughs> past that. All right. So, um, well, that's awesome. I really appreciate your openness and uh, your willingness to talk to us about these things because I know tons of people are like me don't really know much about that at all. And a lot of people, and this is probably the biggest misconception because I said this to Sandra and she said, oh, that's a misconception. And it, she didn't like it, but they think that, well, if you had a good lover or if you had somebody who was more your sexual type or you'd be okay, but she's tried them all, she said, and <laughs> she doesn't like any of them. And even with her great lover, she would enjoy it to a point, but it was not really the sex. Like she just, the sex didn't do anything for her. So just make sure that you got that. He was a great lover. She just wasn't interested. I just, I just wanted to repeat that in case people miss out on that, you know, because it is a huge misconception.
right? Yeah, it's a huge misconception. I mean, yeah. he was very attentive. He was more attentive to my physical needs than I was his, right. to be honest, because he, he liked sex. So, so long as I, I was getting my pleasure, he was very switched on to the fact that guy needs to really give women good pleasure in order right. to get what he wants, which is the sex. Right. So he's very switched on to that, but he's in a yeah. very loving and way. And see, she yeah. still didn't enjoy sex. I just want to make that clear. So <laughs> yeah. I wanted to ask you my last question. And that is, what else would you like people to know about asexuality? Um, asexu is there anything that you haven't covered? Well, asexuality can be a journey of discovery. So when you first find out you're asexual, you could um, think you're one part of the asexual spectrum. And as you progress, you could actually find out that you're on, uh, you know, you're, that you're a different type of category if you like of what you originally thought you were so because asexuality is so huge and there's so many subcategories it's really good to actually do research look closely into it and take your time to define who you think you really are do you know what i mean and there's no right or wrong way to be asexual you know so um you know some p people like who are asexual some asexuals do watch porn some do masturbate some are into bdsm but without the actual intercourse some have got kinks so again a lot of these are myths and and stereotypes that have to be broken but it's you know it's imperative people know there are a lot of asexuals that are sex repulsed they don't want sex they want nothing to do with it so be very careful when you're talking to an asexual to make sure you know that they're not all the same there's some don't even like the w mention of the word sex whereas others you know don't mind it you know like, i don't mind other people having sex as long as i'm not involved i got friends that are both asexual right. and friends that aren't asexual and right. i'm personally sex repulsed to me but not others they can talk to me about it and actually on my asexual lives my asexual life chat show we discuss sex in some of the shows because i cover all the asexual spectrum not just certain types of asexual so those right. that don't like sex at all and those that don't mind it or are sex positive and you know i discuss things like dry humping i've even got a demonstration video on that it's very popular dry humping Can with a cuddly toy on facebook it's with a cuddly toy i might add not a real okay. person okay <laughs> cuddly toys are much better that's funny okay as you see, Sandra is very entertaining and I could sit here and listen to her all night. I do want to ask you though, Sandra, you have several places where people can find yeah. you. So I'm going to I list did. them all on this video. Uh, but did you want to say anything that uh, any of those? That's her book. Uh, yes, don't forget to get a copy of Asexual Perspectives book. It's very, very important. Okay. If you're new to asexuality, this answers pretty much every and all question you'd originally have about asexuality and the good thing about this is it shows you the diversity across the asexual spectrum so this book i wrote to celebrate our diversity across the asexual spectrum and our differences within it okay. um so it's got 47 different stories and they're all in a chapter on their own so it's really easy to read okay so any questions yeah definitely get this book it's out on amazon or you can order it if you go to bookshops so i'm gonna get the book because i'm i work with people sometimes that don't know if they are asexual or not so I need to know. That's yeah. a great idea. And you know what? I want to mention someone because since we talked last time, I've met somebody whose child is asexual. And uh -huh. we discussed that. And I was like, that would have been a great book for a parent to have because she didn't know what to do when her child was growing up, you know? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of stuff that we don't know about sexuality. And asexuality is one of those things. We just don't know about it. So thank you for sharing and telling us about it. I so appreciate that. And so I'm going to wrap up here and say thank you to everybody who's watching. Uh, I know it's a replay tonight. I hope that you enjoy it and that you ask your questions. You know, you can put them in the comments or you can send them to coachdianeD at gmail.com. So thank you and have a great night. And don't forget to make pleasure first. Bye.